Hello, good morning, Georg. It's good to see you. Hi, right, good morning, Val. Great to see you too. Yeah. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Um, in anticipation of our interview, so let's <laughs> let's yes. see if that works out well. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, kind of um, uh, being available for the interview. And uh, thank yeah, you for, um, thank you for doing the interview. Yeah. It's my pleasure. And uh, yeah, it's also good to see you being well in these kind of complicated days. And um, yeah, now uh, today I'd like to interview you about uh, Journal of Petrology. And uh, since November last year, you are the uh, new executive editor for Journal of Petrology. And um, this is uh, following on from Marjorie Wilson, who's been the executive editor for many years, but she had to step down in May uh, last year. And you have been uh, the acting executive editor for several months, and now you're fully installed as the uh, full executive editor since November. And uh, of course, publishing is very important to us uh, in our line of business. And uh, you are facing uh, quite some challenges, I think, in the new publication world. And I'd like to chat with you a little bit about that. But for our listeners, I'm going to say a few words about your record. So, uh, well, Georg is well known um, as a petrologist, and he uh, led quite a number of international interdisciplinary research projects in petrology and geochemistry, published over 60 um, SCI journal articles and book chapters, and uh, he's been a guest editor for a number of books and associate editor. And of course, he was also an editor for Journal of Petrology before becoming the acting and now the full executive editor. Georg um, <clears throat> graduated from Cambridge in 95 and received his PhD from the Open University in Milton Keynes in 98. And then there was a postdoc spell in Bristol to uh, uh, up to 2001. And then in um, uh, New York, Columbia University to 2004. And then from 2004 to 2005, you were in Hawaii. Oh, quite a journey, to be honest. And then yeah, um, that you, was great. Hawaii was great. <laughs> <laughs> you had a, a, quite a spell in um, uh, Taiwan then at Academica Sinica. And then in 2013, you were appointed a senior lecturer at Massey University in um, Palmerston North in New Zealand. And there you were promoted to full professor in 2018. And now on top of this amazing career, you're also the new executive editor of Journal of Petrology, which I like to think is one of the leading journals in petrology um, in our field. And uh, now um, with this new task at hand, um, I'd like to kind of ask you a few questions if that's okay. Sure, sure, great, yeah. Great, so Thank um, you, um, the pleasure is uh, all mine. And my first question is, you uh, you have a long-standing record with um, a Journal of Petrology. What's your connection? What's your personal connection as well with the journal? Yeah, I guess I first encountered uh, a Journal of Petrology in my uh, first postdoc uh, in um, Bristol. And um, I published two uh, articles, two long articles on the Sufri Hills volcano of uh, Montserrat uh, in Journal of Petrology in 2003. Uh, so that, that was my first encounter of the uh, uh, intense rigor, let's put it, of the reviewing and ed editorial process of the journal. So I put quite a lot of work in into that. And But I must say that uh, I think these uh, articles really made an impact and uh, really helped me in my uh, professional development and in my career uh, as well. Uh, so uh, I, I have to thank Journal of Petrology of accepting these articles. Uh, basically, I'm indebted to the journal uh, since very early on in my career uh, for uh, allowing me the opportunity to publish my um, research there. And then, uh, well, uh, after the many different positions, I finally got offered the role um, of associate editor in the end of 2016. And uh, I gladly took that role up because um, I like Journal of Petrology. It publishes some of the best articles. And uh, as associate editor, as you know, uh, being one yourself, um, you actually have a, a real impact on the quality of uh, the science that's being published there. Um, by uh, steering uh, the best papers to perfection, from good to perfect, you know. So, um, so I did that for a few years, and uh, then, of course, in 2020, when uh, Marge Wilson stepped down, 
Um, I realized that being associate editor, uh, while really important for the uh, quality of the article, isn't really sufficient uh, for a journal uh, in order to, uh, you know, uh, pro proceed uh, successfully in the current um, competitive landscape of publishing. And the journal really needs a strong uh, executive editor. Uh, that kind of became clear to me after Marja uh, was uh, kind of out of action for uh, a few months. And so uh, I felt that I can contribute to that. And um, so I offered um, to take on that role of executive editor. And um, this is the story how I got here. Yeah, so I, I have a fairly long personal connection with the journal. Yeah. That's very good. Thank you very much for that. And I, I can only emphasize what you said. I can uh, only support what you said. Uh, one of my first papers uh, from my PhD was published in Journal of Petrology, and I had to go through four reviews, which was really, oh, I felt it was a bit painful at the time because uh, many other journals only offer two reviews. And um, it was, however, worthwhile because it is one of my best cited papers. And, uh, the and paper, you know, uh, yeah, you uh, know, well, I remember that paper. I oh, remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, the half life of the journal is amazing, but we'll come to that in a few minutes as well. So, yes, but yeah. talking about the impact of the journal and the importance, um, I have um, pre formulated a few questions. So, I'll run to the next one now. The um, okay. Journal of Pedology has, of course, this long-standing history, and uh, it's now um, over 60 years old, and uh, there is a number of real milestone papers, and I, I, I mean real milestone papers, not like my PhD paper, <laughs> so which is a good paper, <laughs> I like to think, but uh, real milestone papers, and uh, they have really shaped the reputation of the journal. And um, Marjorie Wilson has, of course, um, uh, kept the journal on a very high standard, and uh, we all have great hopes that you will continue and improve on that. And uh, would you like to say a few words Me about too. some of these <laughs> milestone papers? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, um, uh, it's really quite amazing uh, what we uh, learn in our undergraduate programs and what we teach in our undergraduate programs in um, geology. Um, uh, when you look through um, the course material, you will find that many of uh, these really important aspects have first been published uh, in Journal of Petrology, starting in the 60s with, you know, uh, Lawrence Wager's um, a classification of um, igneous cumulates, uh, which are part of the undergraduate curriculum. And then, of course, uh, Miyashiro's discovery of paired metamorphic belts, um, you know, the blue schists and um, kind of Buchen type uh, metamorphism that you see um, at convergent margins. And uh, I guess in the 60s also, I should mention Yoda and Tilly's uh, fundamental experimental work on uh, the origin of uh, basaltic rocks. And then continuing on in, in the 70s and 80s, you know, McBurney's studies of uh, the Skergard mm -hmm. layered mafic intrusion. Um, that was first published in Journal of Petrology. Dan McKenzie's uh, study on the generation of, and compaction of partially molten rocks uh, with a little side issue of uh, the uh, dihedral angles that we now teach to our undergraduates, you know, uh, greater than 60 degrees porosity, less than 60 degree is permeability. So this is all first published in uh, Journal of Petrology. I guess uh, we should also maybe mention the seminal work of uh, England and Thompson uh, on the pressure temperature time paths of uh, regional metamorphism, uh, which was first published in the journal. Really, since then, you know, the, the journal hit it off so well in the first uh, two decades. Uh, since then, it basically had developed its reputation. And um, I, I must say, like, the uh, best work in uh, Ignis and Metamorphic Petrology has really ended up uh, in this journal because of its reputation. So... Yeah. Very good. I mean, many of those papers you um, you mentioned have been indeed absolutely discipline shaping and have been shaping my thinking about the subject. 
So I remember many of them quite well already as an undergrad, uh, McBurney's work or Wager's work uh, uh, on layered uh, cumulates. Uh, in my undergrad thesis, I was working on layered rocks. And uh, uh, yeah, it's been mind blowing. I remember these yes. massive papers by Wager on cumulate theory. And uh, <laughs> it's been really kind of, yeah, eating away in my brain ever since. So now building on this legacy, uh, and this is quite a legacy as you have outlined now, uh, what yes. is your vision for the journal in the future? Well, I think the primary importance really is for the journal to retain this uh, high standing in the community and to retain its, uh, um, it, its um, you know, standing of, of being the top journal in this field. And in order to ensure this, we really uh, need to continue having the rigorous reviews that uh, are uh, uh, being done traditionally by this journal. But at the same time, um, we need to kind of speed up a little these uh, reviews and the editorial handling because um, very long review times hinder um, early career researchers to uh, submit their papers. And of course, many of the best ideas are actually the ideas of early career researchers. Uh, and we want to make sure that these ideas end up in the, the top journal in petrology. And so um, my vision is to continue the rigor of the review, but to um, make way to have slightly shorter review times. And um, so in terms of more specific things that I envision for the journal is uh, the introduction of uh, uh, letters type articles that are maybe up to 4,000 words long and yep. maybe have up to four figures uh, maximum. Um, they would be, you know, they, they wouldn't be your typical Journal of Petrology article, but they would offer like really fundamental new discoveries uh, to be seen and be rapidly disseminated uh, by uh, the, uh, the journal because shorter art uh, articles take a uh, shorter time uh, to go through the review process normally. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, then uh, what we'd also like to do is... Um, since the journal is gone, uh, you know, fully online now, it's very easy to um, have some virtual thematic collections where specific subject areas are kind of collected from uh, whatever is being published. And that would allow authors to find uh, research of interest quite, um, quite rapidly. And it would also sketch like the development of um, these uh, individual research fields through their history, because we would have this uh, thematic collection uh, run over, you know, uh, not just a couple of years, but uh, five to 10 years or longer. So I think that would be quite interesting to see how different fields evolve. And then last not least, I think the most major change that I'm envisaging is uh, the uh, expansion of the subject area of the journal to include uh, the petrology and cosmochemistry of planetary materials. I mean, we all know um, that planetary materials, uh, the processes that form them are really igneous and metamorphic processes. So it is quite... Um, yeah, puzzling to me why um, the journal hasn't really been supporting um, igneous and metamorphic processes from uh, extraterrestrial bodies, you know? And so uh, the idea is that we expand the journal into this direction. And that would then also allow us to, um, you know, focus on the milestone uh, uh, on the milestone on the best articles if you don't increase the number of articles we we publish uh, per month um, or per year um, and we add some new fields to it we can be a bit more uh, exclusive um, and kind of focus on the best articles absolutely yeah. yes and yeah. um, 
ensure high quality. No, this is very exciting, yes. particularly the expansion to the extraterrestrial uh, uh, petrology. So uh, particularly in the age of space mining and things like that, I think this is very, very useful <laughs> yeah. and exciting. So yeah. and, and we have uh, like um, upcoming missions, you know, to the moon and the absolutely. Hayabusa 2 um, uh, mission has just collected and brought back samples from uh, an asteroid and um, we are going to the moon, we are going to Mars, so um, we have a couple of exciting decades in um, extraterrestrial uh, petrology ahead of us and we want the journal to participate in that. Yes, and of course, so the other relevant aspect is what we can learn from these um, extraterrestrial bodies has often implications for how the Earth has formed and how the processes inside our planet operate. So uh, we we'll learn Absolutely. not just yes. about these bodies, but about our planet as well. So I think the link makes complete sense to me. It's exciting to hear that. Now, to accomplish all these ambitions, uh, how will you go about practically? What have you changed or what are you going to change in the future to achieve all these kind of ambitions? Yeah, so um, I guess uh, what I'm going to do in terms of the expansion of the subject field is uh, I'm uh, going to um, work with uh, Oxford University Press to appoint a couple of editors who can handle such new papers. Um, and these will come on board, um, you know, over the next few years. Um, and I think what I've done in the past, um, I think I can be quite happy uh, to report that we already uh, get to publication timescales that are uh, now with oftentimes within less than a year from submission. And um, from uh, submission to first decision, we are actually down in most cases to less than three months, which for okay. uh, which for some of these uh, you know long data rich articles, I think is really quite um, quite good. Uh, of course, we we don't compete in that case uh, with um, very short articles. Um, uh, published in some journals, but uh, actually we get quite competitive. I, I've had a geology article a few years ago that took forever to uh, to get the reviews back. So actually, I think I must have waited around three months for that. So um, actually, we are we are actually quite good uh, in that case. So we've we've managed to to improve, and I think we are right now. Um, in a shape where we can definitely accept um, articles from early career researchers who need rapid um, turnaround times. Yes, that, that is indeed very, very important. So, uh, and this has been one of the things that I've heard people say that uh, for early career researchers, it may be a disadvantage because it may take quite a long time. On the other side, I think, uh, as, as you have shown in your uh, PhD work, and I guess it, it applies to myself as well, uh, journal Petrology has um, a long half-life. So the journal articles that have gone through the rigorous peer review, they have some gravity. They stay for some time and they will be cited for some time. So uh, to build um, um, your early career research into a long-standing career, Journal Petrology can be a great help here, I think. So uh, this yeah, is Yeah, and important. I think I, I, I should really add that um, you know, there's always a bit of a balance between the rigorous review and the rapid, um, the rapid uh, publication. Mm -hmm. You can't have, um, you know, you can't excel in both. You need to find a balance. Yes. And I think uh, the rigorous review is really very important and it has actually uh, made sure that Journal of Petrology has such a long citation half-life. It's over 16 years. And uh, for a journal that's 60 years old, that, that is actually excellent. Um, you know, it, it's better than most journals that uh, publish petrology um, uh, articles. 16 years half-life. Wow, that's, that, that's it's quite something. So 16.3. Uh, that, what that means uh -huh. is that, uh, that basically when you publish in Journal of Petrology, you will uh, your paper will be cited for one and a half generations. 
And as I say, yeah, I, I can feel that because my PhD uh, paper is still cited, it's still going strong, and this is now a little over 16 years since the PhD. Uh, when did I publish that? 2002. So uh, yeah, yeah, but I can still kind of harvest citations from it. It's still going relatively strong, and uh, it's still kind of feeding into my career to this day. So I, I think uh, it was certainly a very good long-term investment. And uh, yeah. it also came with a certain amount of prestige at the time when you publish it, of course. So yeah. this is very good. And um, um, in addition to cutting down the processing times, the review times, uh, while ensuring the quality of the, uh, the publications, um, the um, uh, new formats that you introduce and the scope of the publications now on offer, they've also seen some changes. And you've also made some changes to the uh, advisory and the editorial board. Um, would you want to say a few words about that? Yeah, so I'm happy to report I've expanded the advisory board a little and uh, the advisory board is now gender balanced, would you believe it? And uh, the um, editorial board um, with uh, some new appointments uh, that I had to make uh, mid last year because of uh, um, early retirement and also some um, editors being on long term sabbatical leave. Um, we are now moving towards gender balance um, on the editorial board too. So this, I guess, is just uh, to show that, um, you know, uh, Journal of Petrology is really putting an emphasis on promoting diversity uh, and we are very inclusive um, and um, support uh, the entire community uh, who is producing wonderful petrological studies. That's excellent. That's really good to hear. I'm delighted about that and uh, it's a great pleasure to be part of that and supporting that. So. Uh... Then um, what uh, other things uh, do I have on my list? Yeah, well, um, in terms of challenges, this is one challenge you're tackling and you're improving on that. I can clearly see that. But uh, there is more challenges out there. So what do you feel are additional challenges that we have not yet addressed um, when um, it comes to kind of, you know, the future of the journal? Well, um... In terms of diversity, uh, you know, uh, with one of the new appointments, Marlena Alberg, we we actually uh, have now uh, the African continent as part of um, part of the editorial expertise, if you want to say. Yes. Uh, you. And Africa has a lot uh, to offer, of course, in terms of uh, petrology, igneous oh, and yeah, metamorphic. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, and I think with the new appointments that we are going to make in the future in planetary petrology, I'm going to uh, kind of hope to expand uh, the internationality of the journal uh, towards Asia. So that um, that is, you know, challenges the, uh, that we are tackling the diversity. Um, in terms of other challenges, uh, that the journal faces, I guess there is, of course, the competition of other journals. Yes, that's Which, what I would uh, ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I guess the competition isn't really that tough because the Journal of Petrology is so great. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it will stay great if we can keep the rigor and review up, which we will, uh, I'm sure you with that. And uh, if we can actually shorten the um, submission times, and uh, we are shortening the submission times even further um, uh, with the introduction of the letters type articles for some submissions. Um, I think um, the other good thing about publishing in Journal of Petrology, and I think the community may not realize it, but uh, once a month, I select an editor's choice article. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, roughly, you know, it's more than 10% of the articles become editor's choice because we have around seven or eight articles published per month. And um, the editor's choice article is uh, free access, um, uh, free of charge, free access. Um, to the community. And that, of course, uh, is great to aim for, uh, for authors uh, to have an open access uh, article out there without having to pay. Um, That's of very course, important. It's a bit That's of, very good. It, yeah. 
it, it means that you really want to make your paper good to give it a chance uh, to be selected as editor's choice. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I guess uh, the key with all challenges is that you have to identify challenges early. And if you do uh, and you react to those challenges in a timely manner, then um, you are good to go. And uh, with my expertise uh, over 10 years uh, in editorial roles of different kinds with different publishers, um, I think the journal is uh, in a great position to actually tackle the future challenges. So uh, I'm quite confident that uh, we have a good future. I, I kind of uh, come along with you here. I think uh, if you identify challenges early, they often become opportunities. And uh, this is very important. So it's good to stay on the ball. And I, I think uh, you are, as far as I can see, are really doing that with the journal. Can I come back for a minute to the early career researchers? Because that's very important. Um, there is, of course, big competition out there. Uh, academia is um, or can be quite a, a challenging field. Um, but it's also full of opportunities. Would you like to kind of say an encouraging word for early career researchers, maybe? Yeah, definitely. So I think early career researchers, uh, researchers should absolutely um, consider Journal of Petrology as one of their prime outlets. The journal offers itself uh, for, you know, um, thesis chapters uh, that are data rich and uh, generally long. Uh, they can go into Journal of Petrology and they have a long-term impact as we've discussed before. And also for postdoctoral researchers, I think, you know, um, all these, um, all these fields or all these people who actually have data rich articles uh, that can make an impact. Uh, for them, Journal of Petrology is like the ideal place to be published, I think. Um, and I just want to mention again that uh, I really believe that my career, and, and as you said, you think also your career, uh, has actually uh, benefited from having published in Journal of Petrology. So, yeah, go for it, I say to the early career researchers. Let's, let's see you at the new word. That's very good and very encouraging and uh, with a new effort to kind of cut down the processing times while maintaining the high standards. I think it is attractive for early career researchers. Great. Now, finally, um, one of my kind of um, final closing questions I have here. Um, well, being the editor in chief, being the executive editor is, is, is also probably a bit of a challenge on a personal level, I would think. I mean, uh, how do you feel about this in your new role? What uh, kind of do you feel is personally the most challenging aspect for you? Yeah, thanks, Val, for that question. Um, I guess when I first became acting executive editor, what I felt very challenging um, in, in the first couple of months or so was actually making decisions to outright reject papers that were not of uh, high enough quality. It's, I find that very hard um, because it's kind of not giving authors a chance to even be considered, but um, on the other hand, I need to protect my uh, editorial board from actually having to deal with these uh, papers. And you, you know, as an associate editor, that it is already a lot of work to deal with like 12 to 15 papers per year, some of them quite long. And so I, I really need to prevent you from looking at stuff that isn't up to the standard of the journal. Mm -hmm. I guess I had a fairly steep learning curve with that. and. Um, so I, I, I think I tackled that. Like right now, I think uh, one of the challenges, um, uh, but actually an enjoyable challenge for me is um, to deal with say unusual complaints or requests uh, and uh, that, that, that I sometimes get, and uh, that involves oftentimes uh, human emotional behavior that okay. uh, may not really be um, part of scientific publishing, but uh, it turns out it is. And um, I actually deal with such challenges with a big smile on my face because I like uh, unusual requests and, um, and I like to be able to 
to resolve these requests. Sometimes, uh, you know, in fairness, mostly in fairness, and uh, uh, with, ben with every, uh, every party benefiting. Um, but sometimes, um, well, sometimes it's a bit tough. The good thing is that as executive editor, um, I really have the final word. Uh, so <laughs> that, that is the benefit, you know, <laughs> that is the real benefit uh, of being executive editor. <laughs> no, I can understand that. I can see that it's quite challenging because uh, sometimes uh, publishing is associated with a lot of emotion on the author's part or on people who have uh, had different views. And uh, there, there can be uh, sometimes kind of very strong reactions and uh, this uh, is of course something that needs to be handled with care and uh, in a fair way so I think this is the what I would also see as one of the biggest challenges for the executive editor to um, be above uh, this in a way and uh, make fair and sensible decisions that as you say profit all people involved so uh, here yes. I think uh, indeed, um, uh, I'm glad you enjoy that because I'm not sure I would enjoy that all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to be an optimistic character and <laughs> not suffer too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That sounds not good. Fun. No, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also sure that uh, with experience you develop kind of uh, a routine in that uh, to a certain degree and uh, can be very objective in, in your judgment there. So, well, this brings me to the end of my questions. This was very useful. It was very instructive about the new changes you are implementing, about the visions you have about uh, prospects for early career researchers and um, I think this is giving uh, the readers and authors of the journal a real kind of idea of where this is going so thank you for that Georg and um, I keep my fingers crossed for you and for the journal of course and that uh, the journal will grow in reputation from here on even further and that it will stay on the highest level of um, scientific publishing so all the very best from my side and thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, well, of course I have uh, big shoes to fill with Marjorie Wilson uh, being the long-term, you know, uh, quarter of a century previous executive editor. But yeah, thank you for the good wishes. I have um, only the best vision for uh, the future of the journal and um, I really welcome um, uh, early career researchers work and i'm really looking forward to all the community's great um petrological articles that uh, i'm going to handle and some of you are going to handle um in the next few years so uh and thank you for the interview thank yeah. you Georg. well uh all the very best and i'll say goodbye and uh good luck bye. talk soon bye yeah